Pope Francis has introduced a new document written, published by the prefect for the Dicastery of the Doctrine of the Faith. You know him as Kissy Fernandez. He wrote the book, Heal Me With Your Mouth, The Art of Kissing, Victor Manuel Fernandez. He's back at it again. And we got the document today talking about how there can be blessings of those who have same-sex attractions, as long as it doesn't give the semblance of holy matrimony. Today, I'm going to read that portion of the document so that you know what's going on. And I'm going to talk about the purpose of this. First off, the purpose of what is going on in the Synod and what is going on with this document is essentially not about homosexuality. Look into my eyes. Here's what's going on. This is not essentially about homosexuality. This is not essentially about being pastoral. This is about the destruction and the obliteration of matrimony as a sacrament. It is the same Jesuitical mind tricks. You've heard of the Jedi mind tricks? These are the Jesuit mind tricks that they have been doing since the 1950s. It's called gradualism. Instead of just chainsawing a tree down, they, with a hatchet, take little pieces out of the trunk of the tree. Chip, 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 chip. They hatch it away until the tree falls. It works. I'm going to read to you a quote proving that this is what they do and that this is all based in weaponized ambiguity. We're going to talk about what that means. I'm going to give you some examples of it. For example, he's saying two people can come up for a blessing in the church so long as it doesn't look like matrimony and so long as you are not explicitly affirming sin. So, I mean, just an example. I'm going to come back to this, but you know, a pimp and a prostitute arrange a time to come and get a blessing at the church. I mean, it's one thing if you got two, two friends, hey, we're going on a road trip, we want a blessing, right? Because blessings are unto something. All right, we'll come back to the weaponized ambiguity. And then the third thing is the modernists, the liberals, it's all about exceptions make the rule. All right, they're going to find exceptions and exceptions and exceptions until one day, and probably it's going to be six weeks from now, you're going to have two men or two women set up a time on a Saturday morning. There's going to be flowers. There's going to be family and friends. There's going to be special music. Elton John music, maybe. Tiny Dancer music. It's raining men music, or maybe it's, uh, what would be the other side of that? <sighs> Sinead, I don't know. In six weeks' time, you're going to have people in Miami with photographers, and people are going to say, whoa, this looks like a wedding. It's not a wedding. Francis says we can't have matrimony in a wedding. But we're going to have a priest, we're going to have a blessing, we're going to have special musics, we're going to have flowers, we're going to have a photographer, and we're going to have a reception after the blessing. So that is today's podcast. Like it, subscribe. I got a couple announcements before I jump in and I read the full text. Number one, my new book on St. Nicholas is a number one bestseller, Christian Fantasies. It's got great reviews. Props to the launch team that helped out with this. Props to everyone involved, creative team, everything. This is a big hit. This is part of my Sword and Serpent series, which is a best-selling series over the last 10 years. This is the new installment. Look, people say Santa Claus is bad. Santa Claus is commercialism. Well, let's take back St. Nicholas. This is the original Catholic story of St. Nicholas in him redeeming and helping three young girls who were going to be sold into prostitution. This is a fun winter tale 
with all kinds of relics and mystics and prayers about a young priest, the historical St. Nicholas. So get your copy. If you order it, you can still get it in time for Christmas. And it's on sale today. So keep it up there in that number one bestseller, Nikolaus. The link is below and in the live chat. And if you want a signed copy of Nikolaus, there is, whoa, that's a big, big shot in my face right there. If you want a signed copy of Nikolaus, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Dr. Taylor Marshall, and I'll send out signed copies. That only lasts, the signed copies of Nikolaus only last until December 24th. And it's getting a little close, so I'm not sure if you want the signed copy. It'll be there in time for Christmas, but you will get it. So um, if you want a signed copy of Nikolaus, and these, by the way, these Nikolaus at Patreon, they are hand-numbered by me and signed by me. All right, one through however many are ordered. So that's a little bit of a collector's item. It's awesome. One more announcement before we jump in. Sorry for all the announcements, and that is... It's almost 2024. You need a traditional Catholic calendar. I've created the ultimate Catholic calendar that works with the Father Lassance missile and your 1962 missile. This is the NSTI traditional Catholic calendar. It's got the 1945 order and the 1962 order. Ordo. It is awesome. Here's what it looks like. We made sure there's lots of spaces so you can write my daughter's dance recital. Uh, my anniversary, all kinds of things in the white space. And it has noted the 1962 and 1945. And whenever there's a difference, it's in there and it's explained. All right. So this is, to, I've been using for years a 1962 calendar and a 1945 calendar on my wall. And I'm constantly back and forth. I'm tired of that. So we created the traditional Catholic calendar that has the 1945, the 1962 blended. You can follow whichever one you want, and you can see the differences. This is the ultimate end-all, be-all traditional Catholic calendar out there. Um, it's already selling like crazy. And again, there's so many orders. We're a little bit back. I can't guarantee you will get it on January 1st right now because there's so many orders. But you will get it by the second week of 2024 just because so many people are ordering the NSTI traditional Catholic calendar. So get one. How do you get it? You go to www.store.taylormarshall.com. Store.taylormarshall.com. Get you that calendar. Okay, back over to... Oh, and I hopefully the moderators are, moderators are putting in the links. Okay, what did the document say? Here is the document. Fiducia supplicans, right? <sighs> on pastoral meanings of blessings. So what we're going to do is, and by the way, I am going to do Q&A after I do this because I want to hear from you guys. And I know y'all got a lot to say about it, but I'm going to read it and I'm going to give you the analysis and then I'm going to turn to you and we're going to talk about it. All right, here is the document. And I'm going to begin reading at paragraph 31. Why 31? Because that's where it explicitly talks about same sex here it is right here. Blessings of couples in irregular situations and couples of the same sex. Now, there was a lot of people in the Catholic world that were saying, oh, all these people, they're just making trouble and uh, nothing's going to happen. Francis would never do this. Well, he did it. Now, there are careful distinctions here. We're going to look at those, but he did it. It even says... Blessing of couples in irregular situations and of couples of the same sex. So they are explicitly allowing two homosexual men to come up and get a formal blessing from a Catholic priest. This is not abolished. This is not bad. This is now, according to Francis Bergoglio, this is now what the post-conciliar Vatican II assembly is pushing. All right, let's read it. The meat of it is really the first paragraph. This is paragraph 31. By the way, the whole thing I think is 45 paragraphs. So this is a little bit towards the end. Here we go. Quote, 
Within the horizon outlined here appears the possibility of blessing of couples in irregular situations. That's people who are not married validly. I mean, you could say a man and his mistress. Why not? Really? And of couples of the same sex, the form of which should not be fixed ritually by ecclesial authorities to avoid producing confusion with the blessing proper to the sacrament of marriage. So all the Pope's planners are going to be like, yeah, but Taylor, look, it says it can't be marriage. Yeah, I know. It says it can't be the sacrament of marriage. I'm going to make a very important point on this when I finish reading. All right. This is part of the, the weaponized ambiguity. It goes on to say, in such cases, a blessing may be imparted that not only has an ascending value, but also involves the invocation of a blessing that descends from God upon those who, recognizing themselves to be destitute and in need of this help, do not claim a legitimization of their own status, but who beg that all that is true, good, and humanly valued in their lives and in their relationships be enriched, healed, and elevated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Well, yippee ki So you're coming in and you're saying, I mean, and why not, by the way, have some polygamous situations? A dude and, and three wives or three girlfriends. Why not? And say, you know what? There's some real good. There's some real true and humanly validly experience here. So, you know, I'm a guy and I got these three live-in girlfriends. I mean, Shirley, she's an amazing cook. We just want to bless that. You know I mean, her omelets are off the charts. So we just, we want a blessing, just, you know, her omelet skills that she makes for it. And then the waffles she brings, she's amazing. That's Shirley. Here's Betty. You know, Betty is a babe. She's so beautiful. Everybody just turns and looks at Betty. And we just, we want a blessing, her beauty to be magnified. And then I got my third uh, live-in girlfriend over here. That's uh, Jill. And Jill makes a lot of money and she supports all of us. And so that monetary blessing, we want that right there to be recognized by God. We want some descending blessings. And then me, you know, with my three women here, I'm just a stud. I'm a cool dude. So I want some blessings on that. Why not in accordance with this? Now, we don't want marriage. We're not saying we're, we're in matrimony, but we want to come forward and we want to have flowers and we want to take pictures and we want to have a blessing. Why not, according to this rule? Because according to this rule, it's just looking for that which is true, good, and humanly valid in their lives. So that can be making awesome waffles. That could be being beautiful. That could be making money. That could be being a stud, cool guy. By the way, the Pope's planners are going to get this video and cut it into little splices and try to make all this illegitimate. Just watch. These forms of blessings express a supplication that God may grant those aids that come from the impulses of the spirit, which classical theology calls actual grace, so that human relationships may mature and grow in fidelity to the gospel, that they may be freed from their imperfections and frailties, and that they may express themselves in the ever-increasing dimension of the divine love. The response here should be that an expression of divine love should conform to the teaching of Jesus Christ in John's gospel. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. A prostitute and a pimp cannot come forward into a church in front of a Catholic priest and ask for a blessing. They can say, Father, please bless me. I'm really struggling with sin or whatever. I need a prayer. Okay. But to have what we're about to see lined out here with external forms done in public, it may not be replacing the sacrament of marriage, but it is eroding and destroying what we know and replacing what we know to be the sacrament of marriage. Uh, paragraph 32. This is another good paragraph here. We've got to focus on this. Indeed, the grace of God works in the lives of those who do not claim to be righteous, but who acknowledge themselves humbly as sinners like everyone else. This grace can orient everything according to the mysterious and unpredictable designs of God. 
Therefore, with its untiring wisdom and motherly care, the church welcomes all who approach God with humble hearts, accompany them with those spiritual aids that enable everyone to understand and realize God's will fully in their lives. I mean, that's on the face of it good. You know, if a pimp or a prostitute or a, you know, Mexican drug cartel guy goes to a priest and says, you know what, I'm a sinner, I need to get my life right, will you bless me, will you pray for me? Yeah, the problem is, is when the cartel guy brings his business partner and he's like, I run the drugs and he kills our enemies, can we get a blessing? That's the problem here. Whether or not it looks like holy matrimony. See, that, that what they're trying to do here, what... What Kissy Fernandez is trying to do right here is he's saying, hey, don't worry. It's not going to look like marriage, and we're going to say it's not marriage. But there's a bigger problem here. That is the teleology, Thomas Aquinas, the teleology, the purpose of the blessing. You know, if if we're going to go run into a burn, we're 10 firemen, Father, bless us. Give us your blessing. We're running into the building, the burning building to save the babies. Bless you, my children. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You run in the building. You know, four of the ten guys lose their lives. They rescue all the kids. You know, that's a heroic and wonderful thing, right? The priest is providing a blessing, a sanction, and a prayer for those men who are about to do something heroic and sacrificial. That's great. That's good. The problem is, is when you have two people who come up with an irregular sexual situation, whether it's hetero or homo, the teleology's off. Now, if it's two women and they're like, we got this amazing bakery, it's awesome, Father, we want you to bless it, you know, and that our, our people are blessed by our muffins and cakes and stuff, great. But if you come in not as making baked goods, cupcakes, and you come in and say, we went and got a marriage in the state of Hawaii. I'm a girl, she's a girl. And now we want to come in and take pictures and have a priest standing at the altar making the sign of the crossover as we No, I mean, you see the problem here? It's weaponized ambiguity. All right, back to the reading here. Uh, paragraph 33. This is a blessing that, and I'm reading all of this because I don't want someone to say Taylor Marshall read it out of context. He didn't read the whole thing. So Taylor Marshall is reading the whole thing here. All right. Paragraph 33 at the top. This is a blessing that although not included in any liturgical rite, duh, because the Catholic church has never done this before. This is all new. Of course, there's no liturgical rite for it. You're making things up. Although not included in any liturgical rite, unites intercessory prayer with the invocation of God's help by those who humbly turn to him. God never turns away anyone who approaches him. Ultimately, a blessing offers people a means to increase their trust in God. The request for a blessing thus expresses and nurtures openness to the transcendence, mercy, and closeness to God in a thousand concrete circumstances of life, which is no small thing in the world in which we live. It is a seed of the Holy Spirit and must be nurtured and hindered. 100% agree. That's why a person can come up and say, Father, I'm in sin. I have problems. I'm struggling. Can I have a blessing? Or can you pray for me? Can I have a blessing? That's totally different than a pimp and a prostitute coming in and saying, we want a blessing at the front of the church with the priest at the altar. Or, in my example, the stud guy with the three girlfriends that live with him the girl is a good cook, waffle maker. The girl is really pretty and the girl who makes all the money. Paragraph 34. The church's litur liturgy itself invites us to adopt this trusting attitude, even in the midst of our sins, lack of merits, weaknesses, and confusions, as witnessed by this beautiful colic from the Roman Missal. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of thy kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads, and to give us what prayer does not dare to ask. Colics for the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. How often, through a pastor's simple blessing, which does not claim to sanction or legitimize anything, can people experience the nearness of the Father beyond all merits and desires? It 
Here it says, does not claim to sanction or legitimize anything. But this is going to be the ambiguity. You're going to have James Martin at a church, two dudes who have been legally, legally married in the state of Illinois. And there's going to be a photographer and there's going to be special music. And we're, like, we're not sanctioning or legitimizing anything. Because if you read paragraph 34 of the document, it says not to do that. So we're not doing that. Even though we do have a rainbow flag on the altar, we're not doing that. It's treating us like we're a bunch of idiots. It's like what we see is not true, which is more and more the thing in the Western world. Paragraph 35. By the way, if you're enjoying this, give it a like. Like it, thumbs up, share. Good to have everybody here. We've got uh, 2,800 people live right now. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It'll be on Rumble. Make sure you also subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Dr. Taylor Marshall shows on in all those places as well. Uh, yeah, we got 2,800 and we only have 600 thumbs up. Let's get at least halfway up there. Come on. Mash that like button. 36, or 35 rather, paragraph 35. Therefore, the pastoral sensibility of ordained ministers should always be formed before blessings spontaneous, spontaneously that are not found in the book of blessings. Mm. Yeah, I mean, hey, Father, can you bless me? You know, I'm got a big football game tomorrow. You know, I realize that there is a difference between that and, you know, Father, I need you to bless my house or bless my farm or my business, right? There are liturgical blessings for things like blessing wine, blessing gold, blessing homes. And then there is the, oh, Father, give me a blessing. I got, got a big football game tomorrow. I get that. But by giving the carte blanche spontaneity, what you're doing, just like in the Novus Ordo Mass, where the priest gets to add his comments at the beginning of the Mass, you're now introducing a major variable that will not be able to, you will not be able to control it. Right? You're going to have a polyamor polyamorous Right? Let's say there's a polyamorous thruple, three people, and they come forward as two dudes and a chick, you know, and they're just like, Father, bless us, you know. We want to come in on Saturday morning, flamboyant, fabulous. Right? And he's going to be like, okay, well, I can't technically like read out of a book and put rings on all your fingers, but I'll cook up something. I'll cook up something real good me spontaneous. And you see that one of the reasons why in the early church, all the prayers started being written in books and then copied by nun, uh, nuns, monks, maybe some nuns did copy it. I don't know, but monks copying it and then distributing them to monasteries and dioceses all over Christendom was to discourage people from having spontaneous prayers. That's dangerous. And you get some guy who's got a tinge of Arianism or Nestorianism and he just starts cooking up prayers on Sunday and, you know, pretty soon you veer left and you got hardcore heresy and major problems in the church. So the popes in their wisdom said, you know what? I want ev on the first Sunday of Lent, I want every priest praying the same Orthodox prayer on that Sunday. And then on the next Sunday, I want every priest praying this same Orthodox prayer, nothing spontaneous. It wasn't until the 1960s when everything was fabulous and we got Bob Dylan on the guitar and all this stuff, nuns taking off their veils, that everything was spontaneous and fabulous or fabulous. Hmm. Paragraph 36. In this sense, it is essential to grasp the Holy Father's concern that these non-ritualized blessings never cease being the simple gestures that provide an effective means of increasing trust in God and the part of the people who ask for them. Careful that they should not become a liturgical or semi-liturgical act 
similar to a sacrament. Okay, good luck with that. This is the weaponized ambiguity right here in the paragraph. Get your yellow highlighter out and highlight this part right here. You're telling people to come into a Catholic church, which is a sacred, consecrated place, in front of a Catholic priest who is a sacred, consecrated minister, who is going to give you a blessing, and blessings are sacramental. They're not sacraments, but they're sacramentals. And you need to make sure, careful, that they should not become a liturgical or semi-liturgical act similar to a sacrament. This is an ambiguity that I would say is impossible. This is impossible to achieve. If you just want to have a random bystander say, hey, I bless you in the name of the Lord. Okay, that's not a liturgical or semi-liturgical act. But as soon as you involved churches and ordained priests, you have liturgical or semi-liturgical acts, do you not? Indeed, such a ritualization would constitute a serious impoverishment because it would subject a gesture of great value or popular piety to excessive control, depriving ministers of freedom and spontaneity in their pastoral accompaniment of people's life. In other words, in order to provide pastoral accompaniment and spontaneity, we're just going to make stuff up. And if Rad trad Catholics, traditional Catholics say, he just did a, he just did a same sex blessing. He just did. No, I didn't. That was a non liturgical, spontane spontaneous act of pastoral accompaniment. That wasn't liturgy. Yeah, but you were wearing a stole. I saw you wearing a stole. So it was non liturgical, just as Francis says in paragraph 36. Yeah, but I saw James Martin and he, he did this. And I saw a ring. I don't care what you saw. It was a non-liturgical, non-semi-liturgical action that was spontaneous. And it was a pastoral thing. So why are you judging us? You evil trad. Get with the program. Taste the rainbow. Paragraph 37, I'm reading it all. I'm reading it all. Then I'm going to come to your questions. In this regard, there come to mind the following words of the Holy Father already quoted in part. Decisions that may be part of pastoral prudence in certain circumstances should not necessarily become a norm. That is to say, it is not appropriate for a diocese, a bishop's conference, or any ecclesial structure to constantly and officially establish procedures or rituals for all kinds of matters. Canon law, and by the way, he says that, but then he has every bishop and diocese not controlling and establishing procedures and structures for the traditional Latin mass. I just want y'all to see the inconsistency here, the hypocrisy here in 37. Carte blanche freedom for all of this, but then we're going to have ironclad rules and regulation if you want the mass that was celebrated in before 1965, 62, 58. Which is another good reason why you should get the new calendar. You'll see the differences between 1962 and 1945. And you'll be like, I thought it was all trad. And you'll be like, oh, there were differences that were happening between 1945 and 1962. Key. Canon law should not and cannot cover everything, nor should the Episcopal conferences claim to do so with their various documents and protocols since the life of the church flows through many channels besides the normative ones. Thus, Pope, by the way, that's a great one, Trads, when everyone starts saying, you can't go to that TLM, that's schismatic. And you can just quote Francis and say, well, the life of the church flows through many channels. Thus, Pope Francis recalled that, quote, what is part of the practical discernment in particular circumstances cannot be elevated to the level of rule because this would lead to an intolerable casuistry. And yet we have lived. If you're a person who wants your baby baptized in the old Roman Rite pre-Vatican II, you have lived an intolerable casuistry. 
casuistry kind of refers back to the case by case theology of the Jesuits. The slipperiness of the Jesuits over time. If you want the traditional Latin mass, but your cardinal or archbishop or bishop says, yeah, we're closing those three down. You have been living in intolerable casuistry. But if you just want to go get a spontaneous, impromptu liturgical blessing on your sexually irregular union, it's all good. Paragraph 38, for this reason, one should neither provide nor for nor promote a ritual for the blessings of couple in any irregular situation. At the time, hmm, at the time, one should not prevent or prohibit the church's closeness to people in every situation in which they might seek God, God's help through a simple blessing. Sorry, it was at the same time. In a, par- in a, in a brief paragraph, let me reread that because I read it wrong. At the same time, one should not prevent or prohibit the church's closeness to people in every situation in which they might seek God's help through a simple blessing. So every situation. In a brief prayer preceding the spontaneous blessing, the ordained minister could ask the individuals have peace, health, a spirit of patience, dialogue, and mutual assistance, but also God's light and strength to be able to fulfill his will completely. So the priest could do this, should do that. And it applies to every situation. So we could have the polygam, the polyamory situation. And it doesn't give any rules to the priest. So this means the priest cannot be held accountable for anything that they bless, say, pray. Paragraph 39. In any case, precisely to avoid any form of confusion or scandal, when the prayer of blessing is requested by a couple in, in an irregular situation, even though it is expressed outside the rites prescribed by the liturgical books, this blessing should never be imparted in concurrence with the ceremonies of a civil union and not even in connection with them. Nor can it be performed with any clothing, gestures, or words that are proper to a wedding. The same applies when the blessing is requested by a same-sex couple End quote. Now, this is good, right? This actually does say it can't look like a wedding. And it refers to clothing, gestures, or words that are proper for a wedding. But here's the problem with it. And here's the weaponized ambiguity that I'm going to get to in just a moment. The words, the gestures, and the clothing of weddings are different in most cultures. Poland is different than Thailand or Saudi Arabia or Brazil or Canada. So this is a bit of a problem. And if if two guys were wearing tuxedos, let's say, they said, you know, we're going to go with that tuxedo look for our blessing. They, they and the priest could simply say, well, you wear a tuxedo to a cocktail party. You wear the tuxedo to the Academy Awards. There's all kinds of places to wear a tuxedo. So two dudes wearing a tuxedo is not necessarily marriage clothing. And making the sign of the cross while two people hold hands is not necessarily a marriage because not all cultures do that. This is weaponized ambiguity. Paragraph 40. Such a blessing may instead find its place in other contexts, such as a visit to a shrine, a meeting with the priest, a prayer recited in a group, or during a pilgrimage. Indeed, through these blessings that are given, not through ritual forms proper to the liturgy, but as an expression of the church's maternal heart, similar to those that emanate from the core of popular piety, there is no intention to legitimize anything, but rather to open one's life to God, to ask for this, his help to live better, and also to invoke the Holy Spirit, so that the values of the gospel may be lived with greater faithfulness. And then paragraph 40, last one. What has been said in this declaration regarding the blessings of same-sex couples is sufficient to guide the prudent and fatherly discernment of ordained ministers in this regard. 
Thus, beyond the guidance provided above, no further responses should be expected about possible ways to regulate details or practicalities regarding blessings of this type. So the question here is, is what if you're a traditional priest and two women come up to you and they say, you know what, we got married by the state, we've adopted three kids, we're just so happily married, it's awesome, and we would like you to bless us. And we would like everything that is described in the document issued by the Dicastery for Doctrine of the Faith in paragraphs 31 through 41. And if you don't give it to us, we're going to call your bishop and we're going to get you fired because according to paragraphs 31 through 41, we can get everything that's here asked for. And if you don't do it, we're going to ruin your priesthood and you're going to be kicked out on the curb. Have a nice day. All right, so just like what happened in the secular realm and in the civil realm, this ultimately was an attack on holy matrimony, traditional marriage. And they are wanting to hold up matrimony as the ideal. It's the best. But there's other forms now that can be blessed by God. Other ways, other family packages And we're going to begin blessing those. And it's kind of like what happened to the religious life in the Catholic Church. So, you you know, beginning in the 60s, they said, you know what? The ideal is you wear wool coarse habits and you pray and you do penance and you have a very strict life of poverty. That's the ideal. But there's also another way of being a monk or a brother or a nun. And that is you just wear normal clothes, pantsuits lapel pins, you don't wear a veil if you're a nun, and you just do social justice work. And that is just another way to do it. It may not be as ideal as being like a traditional Carmelite or a hardcore Benedictine, but you know what? Just accompanying people and being open to the Eucharistic transcendent celebration of what it means to be church, you know, these kind of things they say, that's another way of being a nun. It's another way of being a monk. You know, you can just wear jeans and a sweatshirt. Now, we're not saying that the old Carmelite way is bad. We're just not promoting anyone to do it anymore. And so they undercut traditional monasticism, and this is going to undercut traditional matrimony. Yeah, but Taylor, no, no, no. Just look at the demographics in both religious life, and now look at what's going on in matrimony. So this is what brings us to the weaponized ambiguity, as I mentioned in the earlier part of the show. It's the Jedi mind or the Jesuit mind trick, mind trick. And I'm going to read a quote from you. This is from an infiltration. This is Father Schilbex. He said, we used ambiguous phrases during the Second Vatican Council. And we know how to interpret them afterwards. This is what they've been doing since the late 1950s and into the 1960s. They know what they want to accomplish. You know, like when you go into a business deal, you want to know what's the one thing I want to leave that business meeting with. Is it an ally? Is it a promise? Is it a contract? Like what am I, when I leave the room, what I want, right? And that guides the meeting. So what do they want? What does Shilbix want? They want to recreate, reform Catholic theology, the church, all seven sacraments, the papacy, and ultimately they want to to reform God in their image. That's what they're trying to do. So what they do is, is they insert weaponized ambiguity. This is ambiguity that they know later on they're going to interpret it to be this, maybe five years down the road, 10 years down the road. And at the time, the, the good hearted, the people of goodwill are going to see, and go, I don't know. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, Oh, don't worry. Don't worry at all. When you read this document or you see this liturgy and it changes this, you know, it's really not that big of a difference. Yeah, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. Don't worry. It's not. They know it's ambiguous. You feel that it's ambiguous, and they're going to push on that. 
throughout the years. This is exactly what is happening in this document. Everybody, including the New York Times and the Washington Post and everyone on planet Earth today, this came out, are all publishing headlines. Pope approves blessings for same-sex unions, dot, dot, dot. And then if you actually read it like we did today, it'll say it's not an actual marriage. You can't have the same, you know, dress or rituals as a marriage. Why are they saying all that? Because they know everybody's mind jumps to this is gay marriage. And so they're creating the ambiguity. And then when the people who are trying to follow the Catholic faith and are of goodwill and are well catechized, say, whoa, 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 this looks like gay marriage. What's going on here? They say, oh, no. We wrote a document on December 18th, 2023. And if you go find it on the complicated Vatican website and then click through and find the English translation or whichever translation, and then you actually find the document and you read all the paragraphs in detail, you will find there in the fine print that it is not the sacrament of matrimony and you can't even make it look like a sacrament of matrimony. Yeah, but I saw that Jesuit do one and it looked just like a marriage. Yeah, but that was spontaneous and non-liturgical. And then they're just done. And they keep on rolling. Weaponized ambiguity. And this brings me to my last point before I come into the questions and comments. Wow, we got a lot of people today. Woo, 3,300. Welcome, everybody. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell. One reason you should subscribe, by the way, is I have for three years said this day was happening. I'm not a prophet. I'm just a guy who studies all these people. I'm a guy who studies the infiltration. Who studies Fernandez. Bergoglio reads what they wrote before they were in power. You connect the dots. For three years, this has been cooking. And here it is. Well, actually more than that. Decades this has been cooking. But you could smell it cooking in the kitchen, almost ready to serve three years ago. And here it is. Exceptions make the rule. This is my final point. We want communion in the hand. There's an appendix back here on communion in the hand. Let me give you the timeline on communion in hand because it shows how they do exceptions to the rule. If you get your book, Infiltration, and you go to page 291, dates of indults for communion on the hand. Holland, Belgium, France, and Germany got permission, limited permission, to do communion in the hand on May 29th, 1969. That was before the Novus Ordo was promulgated. In, in vernacular. In South Africa, 1970. Canada, 1970. Zimbabwe, 71. Zambia, 74. New Zealand, 74. Australia, 75. England and Wales, 76. Papua New Guinea, 76. Ireland, 1976. Pakistan, 1976. United States, 1977. Those were special indults, 1977, to receive communion in the hand. It was a slow roll. It was hard to get, man. Like, we got to get that communion in the hand, man. I don't know. We ain't got it yet. England and Wales got it. We don't got it yet. How are we going to get it? Write some more letters to the Pope. Get some cardinals. Oh, we got it. 1977. We can do that. You know, they do this. They do this. They do this. No, they, no, first you walk away and you do this. It's not reverent. It's not reverent. People are going to leave the podcast now because I say it's not reverent. It's not reverent. What'd they do? They made exceptions to the rule over time normative. So now 99% of people are receiving, maybe it's not 99%, a grand majority of people are receiving communion in the hand when it was unheard of and scandalous in the 1960s and before. Totally scandalous. People were having to get special papal permissions to allow, not even mandate, to allow for it. Exceptions make the rule. Lay Eucharistic ministers. Man, mass went over three minutes. That's too long. We need to get lay people up here administering Holy Communion. Or how about this? 
Hmm. You know, it's kind of hard waking up on Sunday morning. We should have mass at 4.30 p.m. on Saturday. Nuns don't, uh, nuns, religious and priests don't always have to pray the office. They don't have to wear the veil. They don't have to wear the habit, right? These are exceptions. Over time, they become the rule, you know? Father's really busy. We're only going to have confessions on Saturday. Pretty soon, that turns into 45 minutes on Saturday at 3 p.m. The enemies of Christ, the enemies of, ch of the church, want to destroy all seven sacraments. They want to destroy baptism because Satan hates baptism. They want to destroy confirmation. They want to destroy the holy sacrifice, the mass. The Antichrist, get my book, the Antichrist will abolish the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. All the church fathers say so. He wants to destroy all the sacraments. He wants people to stop praying. He wants people to sin. He wants people to be engaged in sexual perversion because that's how he entraps you. That's how he makes it harder for you to return to the sacraments. That's the problem. And this is an attempt to destroy the family and destroy holy matrimony to undermine it. Gee, Taylor, that's kind of hardcore. You're so rigid. This is exactly what we're up against. Francis Bergoglio has shown himself time and time again over 10 years to teach things that are contrary to the Catholic faith. Would you let him teach your children the Catholic catechism? I, Joy and I, would not. We do not want Francis Bergoglio teaching our children morality and doctrine. And that's a very sad thing, a sad situation. And I would ask you the same question. Your precious children, all the sleepless nights and the effort and the love and the concern and the provision and the hugs and just the, your entire heart and your children, would you allow their conscience and their little soul and their mind, their will to be formed by this theology? Me, as for me in my house, no, we would not. And that for me is where the rubber meets the road. That's it. All right, jumping into your comments and questions. There's a lot of you today. Please use a question mark if you have a question, and um, I'll bring you in. Our first one here is from Nellie, and Nellie says, let me make all this so I can read a little bit better for y'all. She's like, I feel like a frog in a pot that has been turned up to boil. Yeah, that's a great analogy. That is a great analogy. And they think that because they say, oh, it won't look like a marriage, that you'll be like, oh, okay, I'll just stay in the pot. Stephen says, standing with Bishop Strickland. Strickland's fired. All those bishops in Germany that were sanctioning these blessings, they're all in good standing, high-fiving each other. Woo-hoo! We got the document. We got that document. This guy right here, Cardinal Fernandez, hooked us up. He's got that turtleneck and chain. The art of kissing, he hooked us up. They are, they're having apple teenies in all the high places in the chancery today. They're like, we're blessing same sex. It's raining men up in here. Back to your comments and to your questions. Man, there's tons coming in. Here's a super chat from Gry Fry. Thank you for the super chat. Do the blessings only apply? I need to make this darker. Hold on. I'm going to make your, your comments darker, the background. Help me out. Maybe it won't work. Oh, here we go. There, look at that. Boom. Okay. Do the blessings only apply to same-sex unions and not all unnatural unions? Such discrimination. Wonder if someone can take their dog to a priest and tell them they're together. Ugh. Vomit. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Why not a pimp and a prostitute? 
why not a man and his mistress? You know, a man and his mistress come up to the priest. Hey, we need a blessing. Wait, who, who's this? Oh, this is Bambi. She's my mistress. Well, where's your wife? I've seen you in Matthew. Well, you know, we're not getting along too well. And there's a lot of good and true and humanly valid things in my relationship with Bambi. And I want a blessing with her. Okay. Francis says. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is opening the door of ambiguity to all kinds of problems. And add on to that, you can there is no written down rules for it, and there are written, no written down prayers. Each priest gets to freestyle on all of it. John Wick, I always love John Wick's comments. John, what's up? I fear the blessings will be applied to pedo priest relationships, complete perversion. I, I hope not. It's disgusting. A lot of a lot of pedo priests do that. They sacramentalize these disgusting actions with their victims and uh, they need a big big millstone big millstone G uh, Gabriella says I was waiting to see how Rome would solve the problem of the Germans here's the answer exactly they just slapped the Germans on the back handed them a big beer stein and said keep on Here's a bit, here's a lot of question marks. So <clears throat> this is why I have not brought my son to our parish because I knew these changes were going to be made. They also did not allow funeral masses or last rites during the, and I think that means, you know, what happened in 2020. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is why you need to find a traditional parish, Byzantine, rite, Traditional Latin mass. You guys got to migrate and find places where you have good preaching, good confessions, good sacraments, and where you're not going to be coming in on Saturday morning to pray with your family. And, you know, you've got Elton and George up on the altar getting a blessing. And they're playing Abba in the background. <clears throat> Moises, the final battle will be against the family. Yes, Fatima, Akita. The final battle will be against the family. This is what we're up against. And this is why I opened the show and said, this is not ultimately about same sex. This is ultimately about the destruction of matrimony, which is the destruction of family, which is the destruction of civilization, which is the denial of logos rationality, reason and order, and the descent into chaos. We got a super chat here from Stephen. He says, Merry Christmas all. Viva Cristo Rey. Hail Christ the King. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Frank says, the timing is interesting alongside the Church of England. Yeah, the Church of England's going along with this, and they're even going into saying things about God that are totally sacrilegious and bad. Not good. Dr. Taylor Marshall, if a new pope came, one from God, would he be able to revert all this evil? A hundred percent. First off, he would have to establish the status of Francis Bergoglio. Is he anathema like Pope Honorius I? Is he a formal manifest heretic? If he was, did he ever have the papacy? Did he lose the papacy? Are all of his canonizations, documents, decrees null and void? What is the canonical outflow of such realizations? All that stuff would be have to handle by a future pope. My personal belief as a dad on a webcam is that that will happen in the future. That's my personal belief, that a future pope will have to come and reckon with Bergoglio. Bergoglio talked about making a mess. He's made a big mess. It's not just a mess. It is a oil spill, and uh, it has to be cleaned up. Has to be cleaned up. Here's Kat Duran. Stop being judgmental. How sad to all of you that think an individual shouldn't be blessed. No, you misunderstand, Kat. We want everyone to be blessed. I want everyone to go to heaven. I want everyone to receive the joy of the Eucharist, period. God wants that for every single person. 
but we're Catholics, all right? And in the Catholic Church, we have a sacramental system, a sacramental economy given to us by Jesus Christ, transferred to us through the apostles and the bishops over time. And there are governing rules over how those are received properly, period. That applies to everything in the church. And everyone can receive a blessing. If a homosexual man or woman says, Father, I am struggling in my life. I know I'm not perfect. I want to be a good Catholic. I don't even know where to begin. But I'm struggling and I need God, God in my life. Can you give me a blessing? Absolutely that person should get a blessing. Cat, 100%. That is totally different than giving blesses, blessings in the context of two people or more than two people that are in sexual irregularity and sexual sin. It's completely different. And you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a genius to see the distinction. It's very obvious, very clear. All right, that's a good place to end. I'm going to end there. All right, so everybody, thanks for watching. And let's pray for the situation. Um, let's pray that we get some clarity here. And I would just say, pray a rosary every day. Be properly catechized. Find a good Catholic church, traditional Latin mass, the Eastern rites, you know, a place where you're going to be nourished. You're going to be fed. You're going to hear good sermons. Your kids are going to be well catechized. They're going to be properly disposed to receiving the sacraments. This is where you need to be. You need to pray your rosary every single day. It's a not negotiable. If you don't pray the rosary, you're not on the team. All right. Before I close, I am going to say, make sure you get the new calendar. It's the 19, pre-1955 and 1962. You can get it at store.taylormarshall.com. This is the end-all, be-all traditional Catholic calendar, especially if you're using the Father Lassant's Missal. If you're using Father Lassant's Missal, this doesn't match a 1962 calendar. It matches a 1945 calendar. So you have to have the calendar on the wall that goes with it, and it all works together. Order yours today, store.taylormarshall.com. There's so many being ordered right now. You will not receive it by January 1st. I just want to set expectations. There's too many. You will receive it probably in the second week of January. So you have to go one week in 2024 without the calendar. But please, if you want to get it and you want to start using it in 2024, order it today. Get in there. All right. And then also, I'd encourage everybody, you can still get it in time for Christmas. Get a copy of my best-selling book about St. Nicholas, Nikolaus. Nikolaus. It's on sale and you can get it, I think, still in about two days. So you can get it in time for Christmas. So order your copy today. Until next time, oh, let's say a prayer. Let's do a Hail Mary. Oremus nomini Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc editor mortis nostre. Amen. St. Peter, pray for us. Nomini Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Until next time, remember our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed. Watch the next video.